Jane Seymour is Dr. Quinn in half an hour. Meanwhile on Granada, High Road. Morning, Alan. I'm just bringing you a cup of tea. Well, that's uh, very good of you, Susan. Oh, I don't know if I can stand much more of this. Oh, we need some time alone. Come here, girl. Mm. I mean time to talk, decide what we're going to do. Is that all you really want to do? Talk? Oh, Alan. Hi. I was just getting Alan a cup of tea. Right. Yes, and I was just saying how grateful I was to both of you and uh, how I never could have managed with, um, without your support. Mm. Has Susan had a word with you? Eh? <sighs> well, we're happy to help out when it was needed, Alan, but, well, we both feel it's time for you to move on from here. Oh, <laughs> I realise that. Which is why I came in. Uh, do you want to lift into town? No, thanks. I don't want to put you to any trouble. No, I'm going in anyway. Well, actually, I prefer to hang around Glendarroch. There are a few things I want to do. All right, well, uh, I'll pick up some lists for you. Lists? From the estate agents. Oh, right. Thanks. Coming, Susan? We'll let Alan finish getting ready. See, he's got such a busy day ahead of him. Bye. I'm sorry, Gary, I don't seem to have much money here at all. Well, I'll need to get this changed. I can't go into a posh jeweler's with a pile of loose change. <laughs> They'll laugh at me. Oh, of course they won't. Mm. I think it's very sweet. A young man scrimping and saving to buy his girlfriend an engagement ring and then going in and picking it himself. Very romantic. Do you think so? Yes, of course I do. So will Sarah, believe me. Right, well, I'll, I'll go to the shop and I'll ask Mrs Morgan. Oh, you think Isabel Morgan knows better about these things than I do, eh? She's been through two husbands and she hasn't been able to keep either of them. I'm going to ask her to change this for tenors. Mm. Knowing Snedney could be anywhere. Is that his house? Yes. Have you tried his mobile? Yes, it's switched off. Oh, typical Snedden. He's probably left it at home because it didn't fit in with his macho image. Oh, you know, he left here full of bravado about tracking down the poacher on his own. <laughs> Somehow I can't quite see him with his gun in one hand and his cellular phone in the other. <laughs> Do you want me to try and contact him somewhere else, or can I concentrate on this battery time? No, just carry on. Sure. Is everything all right, Sheila? Yes, fine. You're not still brooding about this business with the bracelet, are you? No, of course not. Because as far as I'm concerned, it's over. It was a trivial incident that was blown out of all proportion. Admittedly, by me. But you've been very supportive throughout the whole thing. And I'd like to thank you. So, how about dinner tonight, you and Eddie? Where? Here. I'd have to ask Eddie first. Well, do that and get back to me. Bye, then. Bye, Michael. I thought he'd never go. Oh, I knew it was going to be difficult when he came home, but this is unbearable. We're going to need to sort something out. Yeah, we will. I mean, it's not right lying beside him, thinking of you, knowing you're only a few feet away. Well, that isn't going to go on much longer, I'm afraid. Michael made that perfectly clear this morning. No, I ignore Michael. No, I have to go. I can't stay, not now. But I don't want to let you go. Not on, on your own. We're in this together. I don't know what I can do. My hands are tied till Isabel gives me some money. Look, you can't hang around here waiting for that to happen. You have to get away. I'll come with you. I don't care what you've got or not got. No. I can't let you do that. Don't you want me to come? Of course I do. But I could never ask you to do that. Alan, I love you. And you love me. 
Yes, I do. But I couldn't ask any woman to leave her children for me. <laughs> Is that what's worrying you? Oh, there's no need, Alan. I'm not leaving my children. I'm their mother. Where I go, they go. And it'll all work itself out. You'll see. The nerve of the woman. She loses her bracelet, puts us all through the ring and calling us thieves, and then she thinks she can just say she's sorry and that's all right. Well, it's not. Ooh, the more I think about it, the more angry I get. Then don't think about it. I can't help it. And what do you make about it, eh? Well, I think it's been very unfortunate, but uh, she does feel bad about it and she has apologised, so I think we should just put the whole thing behind us. Well, we've got no choice, have we? We're nothing. We're just hired help. She doesn't make that clear enough. Effie, what on earth is going on? There's every security lock in the house in operation. Well, I thought that's what you wanted, to toughen up security. There's no need for paranoia. The security lock on the main door and the door to the office suite is quite sufficient. Right. I will see to that. Oh. Any word from Snedden? No, still none. He's playing up. They both are. They're annoyed with me, so they're both behaving like a pair of spoilt brats. I wouldn't worry about it. I'm not, but I am aware of it. Anyway, any news from Eddie about tonight? Well, actually, I did phone, but he was in a class. They're quite bad at passing on messages, so um, I think we should just skip it. Fine. Thanks, anyway. Even you, Sheila. Oh, excuse me. I didn't get enough sleep last night. I sat down at the computer to do an hour's work, and before I knew where I was, I was hooked. I don't know where the time went. Lucky you. Of course, I never get on it till after nine. Sandy uses it for his homework. It's great for kids. That's what Eddie says. Why don't you get yourself one? And how would I afford that? I'm a single mother. Oh, so am I, and I managed. You've just got to do without something else. I don't have anything else. Of course, I could never have managed it without Eddie Ramsey. He's been a great help. To you, maybe. What about the rest of us? I'm sure you've only got to ask. He'd do the same for you. I doubt it. You're well in there and you know it. Well, I suppose I have known him for a long time. Ever since he was a wee boy. See? <laughs> but I'm sure it makes no difference in the class. That's not how it looks to me. Well, there he is now. Morning, Eddie. Morning. I really should do something to repay him for his help. Maybe I'll ask him up for his tea. Sandy would love that. <clears throat> Still no reply from Snedden. Do you want me to try Morrig's Croft? Because if he had any luck with the poacher, he might have gone there. Don't bother. He'll turn up eventually. And when he does, I'll be ready for him. Sure, he's not doing this to annoy you. He's probably just... Sheila, I've got more important things to worry about than whether Snedden has taken a fit of pique now. Will you have those figures ready for me before lunch? I'm working on them. Miss Hagen. Yes, Effie? There's somebody to see you. I don't believe it. I'm uh, returning your call. You <laughs> angel! <laughs> If only golf was as easy as going around at Farm Foods. Six Matthews turkey steaks. 169. How's that for a birdie? Tagliatelle or cauliflower cheese. Twin pack. 149. The way to a man's heart, love. Swing your McCain pizzas. 159. And don't miss the strawberry splits. 99p for 10. Farm Foods. To save you money, we stick to the things you like. And the next gripe is... Know it all neighbours, Brian. Mine will insist that she told me about surf. Surf? Yes, it's biological, staying digesters. That's why I switched from my high price pad, as she'll say. Don't follow. I do. It works at low temperatures and it costs you less. And what's more, if you're not completely satisfied, Lever will give you your money back. How'd you do that? Sorry? Yes? Well, why not just move house? Someone can save you a third on selected sun care. Who can? Boots. Nothing. Absolutely.
absolutely nothing. Nothing to pay until 1997. That's no deposit, no interest, and no payment. Choose anything, anything in the store, and pay nothing until 1997. Then you take an extra four years free credit on top. Choose anything, and pay not one penny until next year. Then enjoy an extra four years free credit. At DFS. But only till Sunday, 5 p.m. How long does it take to kill a weed? Some popular weed killers take two to four weeks, but not weed all. Weed all works fast. You actually see the weeds begin to die in a few hours. That's hours, not weeks. What's more, weed all still works, even if it rains 10 minutes after application. And once dry, children and pets can play on treated areas. No wonder weed all is Britain's most popular weed killer. Right, tea break over. Oh, where's Bob? You know what he's had for breakfast? In the van. Get some water running. Head out on the highway. Looking for adventure. Weetabix has got enough whole wheat goodness to help keep you going all morning long. Oi, Bob! Blimey, you had some too? Weetabix, once we've started you, there's no stopping you. Ace from McVitie's. The incredibly thick chocolate biscuit. How are we doing here, Cheryl? I'm not doing anything, am I? Well, where's your work? Gone. What do you mean, it's gone? I mean, it's gone. I did it, and now it's just gone. It doesn't just go. You must have done something. Did you press delete? How should I know? I think you'll find me. Yeah, she... thanks, Mary. She's only trying to help, which is more than you did. I'm trying to help everyone, Cheryl. I'm sorry it's taken a long time to get around to you. Let's see. If you save this file at any time, it'll be here somewhere. All we have to do is find it. What's it called? What? The document. Did you give it a name? Elvis. I thought I said the name should give an indication. Oh, never mind. Elvis. Oh, there it is. Excellent. Now all we have to do is retrieve it and print it. Where are you going? The class is finished. Yeah, it's only lunchtime. It's just going to take a couple of minutes. Can you not just hang on? No, I can't. Look, Cheryl, how are you going to learn anything with an attitude like that? I'm not the one with the attitude. Don't worry, Eddie. It's not your fault. Listen, I was wondering, if you had a free evening, would you like to come up for your tea? It would mean a lot to Sandy. He's doing great things on the computer. I'd love you to see him. Uh, I forgot my scarf. Very cosy. Well? Look, thanks, Mary. I'm just pretty tied up just now. I don't know what you must have made that answer phone message. It was completely garbled. <laughs> Not your usual confident self, but I loved you all the more for it. Why? Because you were vulnerable. You sounded like you needed me. Uh, you got all that from an answer phone message? Why else would I drop everything to be here? Oh, I'm glad you came. I don't think I've ever been more pleased to see anyone. Oh, Samantha, I love you this way. Needing me, let me know it. Oh, why shouldn't I? I spend my life making decisions, being in control. But at the end of the day, it's just me on my own. <laughs> I used to think I liked it that way. But now I'm not so sure. Samantha, I know I keep... Shh. Don't spoil it. Don't tell me you've only got a few days. No. This time I'll stay as long as you want me to stay. Oh, please. But on one condition. No reply from Morris. I really thought Sneddon would have gone there. There must be romance in the air. <laughs> what, Morrigan Sneddon? No, not at all, sir. I'm Hagen and Pete Rodell. Did you not see the way she threw herself at him? 
Then they were strolling through the grounds, her hanging on to them, and kissing and canoodling like a pair of two teenagers. It was lovely. You've changed your tune. She'll be needing a man in her life. That's why she was acting so funny. She was starting to crack up. Have you no work to do, Effie? Not really. They're in the kitchen. I thought it'd better to stay away. Didn't want to pry. No, you wouldn't, would you? Here, do you think maybe I should go and ask them if they want anything? No. Well, it might be hungry. If they want anything, they'll ask. Well, I'll just have to hang about here, then. Hmm? Mm. I'll try more eggs again. Hello? Oh, hello, Sheila. Snedden? No, I'm sorry. I've not seen him since last night. He stayed out to try and catch a poacher, but oh, I thought I'd have heard from him by now. Oh, I'm sorry, I've got no idea. Yes, of course. I'll tell him when I see him. Bye for now. Come on, Nell. I don't know what to say. Say yes. Look, I'm extremely flattered you've asked oh, me. Oh, God, I knew it. I think you'd be a wonderful husband, a wonderful man to spend the... Don't say any more. Look, I'm really sorry, Samantha, but I meant what I said. I, I can't bear to get close to you again knowing it's going nowhere. So the sooner I get away, the better. Look, if you just let me explain... There's no need. I'll get the picture. Well, you would if you'd let me finish. Go on. All right. Now, are you listening? If I believed in marriage, I'd marry you. <laughs> Don't overreact. What do you mean? Well, you're not listening. Don't play games with me, Samantha. I'm not. I want you, Peter. I want you in my life forever. The whole works, living together, throwing our lot together. I just hope that's enough commitment for you, because it's all I've got. <laughs> Oh, I'll promise to make you so happy. You'd better. I never thought I'd do this for anyone. Are you sure this is what you want? When can you move in? Oh, whenever. There's nothing I need from home. Peter, you are home. Davy, I'm just going to get help, right? What do you think? It's a lovely gesture, Gary. The ring. What do you think of the ring? Yeah. yeah. Oh. oh, it's really nice, Gary. <laughs> Doesn't look anything in these old hands, but on Sarah's young ones, it'll just look so sweet. Mm -hmm. The man said if she doesn't like it, she can change it. Oh, she'll love it. Believe me, I know about these things. In years to come, when you can afford the very best. Treasure this. I'll give it to her tonight. Oh, no, no, wait. You've got to pick your moment. Uh, now, I'm organising this party tomorrow night. Why don't you give her it then, eh? Hmm. Good idea. <laughs> She's a lucky girl. Thanks, Effie. Quickly. Somebody's been shot. I think he's been out all night. He might actually be dead. Oh, yes, right. Get to Craiglock and pass, right? Oh, no, look, please hurry. This is an emergency. Hi, Susan. Oh, hi, Eddie. <laughs> you were away in a wee world of your own there. How's things? Fine, fine. Um, just waiting, Sheila. They're having a wee meal out. 
Huh? Talk of the devil. Hey there. You two joining us? Eh, uh, no, no, oh, thanks. Oh, I wish you would. Oh, no, another time we're having something to eat. Oh, special occasion? No, no, just a bar snack and some time on our own. It's great having the kids around, but nothing prepares you for the lack of privacy. <laughs> we have to get out of the house to be alone. Huh. Tell me about it. Besides, romance is in the air up at the big house. We thought we'd follow suit. <laughs> yeah, come on. Enjoy your meal. Oh, cheers. It's good to be alone. There's things we have to talk about. Yeah, in a minute. Where are you going? Um, I'm just going to phone Alan. What for? I think it was a bit unfair the way you landed him with the babysitting. He'll be fine. Now, besides, I think he owes us. Sit down, relax. That's what I wanted to talk about, Alan. Oh. I know it's my fault. I was the one who invited him to stay. And I still think it was the right thing to do at the time, but, well, he's got to move on. But, Michael... I know. I know you think I'm being mean. But we're not doing the man any good. He's getting too comfortable. He's got to be told in no uncertain terms. You know, for all your strident feminist talk, deep down, you're just a big softy. And I love you for it. This is great. Um, it was a terrible thing to say, but I'm in no rush to get home. Well, there isn't any rush, is there? You couldn't relax for one night, could you? You had to phone. Just to check. And they're absolutely fine. He's coping beautifully, they're both asleep, and there's nothing to worry about. Is that what he said? Yes, something like that. Good. So we can relax and we can have another drink. Oh, no, not for me. Well, coffee, then. You have one if you want. Couldn't you have a word with Mary? Oh, Mary's not the problem in Cheryl. I mean, if she wasn't complaining about the attention I give Mary, she'd be complaining about something else. What's her problem? I think she's just a troublemaker. Maybe she is. There's no sense in it. I mean, nobody's forced her to come to college. I wouldn't analyse it, Eddie. I would deal with it. Yeah, but how? I don't know, but if you don't assert your authority, she'll walk all over you. Yeah, you're right. But don't go in too heavy-handed. Just, well, try ignoring her, not giving her the attention. See how it goes. You're right again, smarty pants. Any other little problems I can help you with? Uh, how about process management in a preemptive multitasking virtual memory environment? Pass. I said I'm fine. Well, there's no need to bite my head off. I just said you look tired. Right, so I look tired. Susan, I do appreciate how much you do, and I don't say that often enough. Two children, the church work, and now all this with Alan. I said I don't mind. I do. I don't like to see you so stressed out. What we need is a holiday. The four of us, time together as a family. How would you like that? I don't know, Michael. Can we just leave it just now? There's no cheering you up tonight, is there? Well, who asked you to cheer me up? I didn't ask you to cheer me up. Right. Let's go. Oh, this is really nice. No, I don't get enough time to, to just talk. We should make the time. We really should do this more often. Yeah, you're right again, Mrs. Ramsey. It's not get boring been right all the time. No, not at all. You get used to it. Mm, modest, too, eh? <laughs> Here's to us. Cheers. I don't see any problems. Now is actually a good time. I've just completed rather a big deal and I'm ready for a break. Great. So you can use the time to set up here. You really need a base, don't you? Well, I can commute to London if need be. I can travel anywhere from here. Oh, that'll be perfect. <laughs> and how are you going to find living on a country estate? Oh, I will love it. The mountain air, the scenery, the sense of open space, the wildlife. <laughs> hey, you're not going to go all native on me, are you? I might. <laughs> Leave it. <laughs> Mm -mm. Hello? Oh, yes, hello. Morag. <laughs> Sorry? What did you say? Oh, you back already? 
How come you're so early? I don't know. Ask Susan. I'm going to check in the kids. Oh, what happened? Hey, come on, what's up? I can't stand it anymore. I can't. He wants you out of here. What, do you, you think he suspects something? No, of course not. He's too naive. But he wants you out. And I don't want you to leave. I can't stand having you here and not being able to hold you. Mm -hmm.